So as when we were talking about the goods market, I was down here. So the only difference from what we had seen in chapter three and now that we've introduced openness was that consumers had an extra decision to make, which is whether they wanted to buy domestic goods or foreign goods. Okay. So similarly, when we are looking at the financial market, the only difference is that openness in the financial market is going to allow people to hold financial assets in more than one country. So in a closed economy, I as a citizen of Bangladesh can only buy stocks and bonds and other financial assets in Bangladesh. But once we introduce openness, I can trade all over the world. And people from all over the world can deal with financial assets in Bangladesh. Uh, so let's take a look at this. Uh, this is called a balance of payment. Uh, now, of course, there is an official technical definition, but let me just explain it very simply. Balance of payment, in very simple terms, it measures or calculates the amount of money coming in and going out of a country in a year. So of course in a closed economy there is no balance of payment because there's no money coming in or leaving the country. But once we have uh, an open economy, uh, whenever we're trading with another country, for example, when we sell something to another country, that's going to be money coming into the country, right? When we sell something, that country is going to pay us money, that's money coming in. When we buy something from another country, it's a big port, there'll be money going out because we have to pay that other country. And balance of payment uh, makes a list of all of this and gives us an uh, overall uh, amount. Okay. So let's break this table down. Let's go at it. Uh, step by step and see what's here. So we start with the current account right here. And the first two things we have is our exports and imports. Now, when we export, as I already say, that's us selling something to another country. So this is what? This is money coming in. So this is money coming into the country. Import is when we buy something from another country. So that is money going out. So if we subtract uh, ex imports from export, we get this minus 508. So let me write this down. When we take exports and we subtract imports from that, we get something called a trade balance. In this example, in 2014, US had a trade balance of negative $508 billion. What does that mean? It means that $508 billion net left the country. They bought in this much, right here, the, this much left the country, and ultimately, this is the final result. Okay. That's the first thing. Then, I mean, this is all, of course, export, import. This has to do with the goods market, right? Goods market. Now let's come to the financial market. Okay. Now remember, the way we define openness in financial market is when it allows people to hold financial assets in a number of countries. Okay. So let's say as a Bangladeshi, I hold some assets. Uh, let's say I hold some stocks in the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, now, if those stocks are paying out dividends, 
that is money that is going to come to me, right? The dividends that are being paid in US are actually being paid to me in Bangladesh. So for US, that's money going out. For Bangladesh, that's money coming in. So let's take a look at these two figures. One is income received. I'm using we have income received and we have income paid. Income received is when people from your country invest in another country and earns an income from that. And income paid is when people from other countries are investing in your country. And as a result, if, and if they're earning profit, that's being paid to them. It's living the country. So let's write this down as well. Now we have income received minus income paid and that gives us net income in this example uh, us had earned 823 billion dollars but they had also paid 585 billion dollars and on net during that year their net income was 238 billion dollars this is how much they had Then we have uh, something called net transfer. Okay, so let's talk about net transfer. So once again, there is a technical definition for it and you guys can check it out in the book, but I'm going to make it very simple. Net transfer effectively means aid money. Okay, so US gives aids to a lot of countries around the world. Uh, so that's what this figure shows that during 2014, US had a net transfer of negative 119, which means that they had paid money had left the country that's worth $119 billion, so negative for them. Uh, in Bangladesh, this would be a positive because we don't pay that much aid to other countries, but we do receive a lot. So for us, it will be a positive. So when we take these three things, trade balance, net income, and net transfer. So one plus two plus three. All of this together gives us a current account balance. Okay, so of course, remember, we are taking a look at the current account. And so at the end, we have current account balance. What does our current account balance tells us? Uh, for US in this case, for example, it's minus 389 billion. Write this properly. Dollar minus. So what does this figure it means that during the year uh, 2014, during the year 2014, this much money left USA compared to how much came in. So a certain amount of money came in, a certain amount of money left, and when you bring them all together, ultimately for that one year, close to $400 billion left US. Okay. Now let's take a look at the capital accounts. This is where it gets interesting. Notice that even though we talked about stocks and bonds and whatnot, which was primarily here, income received and income paid. We only talked about uh, uh, the income, so the dividends that you were earning or the interest payment that you were earning. Uh, but let's say to get uh, 
for me to have a stock in the New York Stock Exchange, I need to first buy that stock, right? So that's, you write this down. If I buy a stock in New York Stock Exchange, what does that mean? That means that Bangladesh has increased capital holdings in USA. And, oh, and the opposite, if a foreigner buys a stock in, let's say, Dhaka Stock Exchange, what does that mean? It means that some other country, let's say India, that means India has increased its holdings in Bangladesh. So that's what's happening. Now think about this. In the year 2014, $389 billion left USA. What that means is that other countries increased their holdings in, New, in USA by $389 billion, okay? If that's not clear, please just think about it. it, it this, this is an important part, so it should make sense to you guys. When I'm buying something in another country, what that means is that Bangladesh's total holdings in that country is increasing. When another country is buying something, uh, when another a person from another country is buying something in Bangladesh, a financial asset in Bangladesh, what that means is that country's holdings in Bangladesh is increasing. And all this leads to money going out, money coming in, right? So when I'm buying a stock in USA, when Bangladesh's stock holdings in US is increasing, that's also money going out. To buy that asset, I had to spend money. I had to pay a company in USA the value of the stock. So now let's come here, okay? Look at the first line here. Increase in foreign holdings in US assets. What this means, is that foreigners, this is foreign holdings of US assets, it means that people from outside the US has bought assets in USA, okay? That was worth this much, this much. When they bought this much asset in US, what did they have to do? They had to pay someone in US, right? A person or a company or the government. So that means this is money coming in. Let's look at the second line. This is increase in US holdings of foreign assets. US holding of foreign assets. This means that means that people or companies or the government of USA has bought assets in other countries. Okay? So when someone from US is buying assets in another country, what do they have to do? They have to pay another person or a company in another country. So this is money going out, right? So this is minus, this is money going out, this is money coming in. And so when you adjust them, you subtract 792 from 1031, you get 239. What that means is that uh, during this one year of 2014, 
uh, when you adjust for all the assets that foreigners have bought in US and all the assets that US citizens and companies have bought in the rest of the world, ultimately, $239 billion have flown into the US. I hope that's clear to everyone. And the last thing we have is statistical discrepancy. Uh, that means that, you know, basically errors. Times when calculations don't exactly match up. And, I mean, when you're dealing with billions of dollars, I mean, you, you won't always have exact figures. So that was equal to $150 billion. And when you add them up, you get 389, which is equal to this. So this two, they, they will always equal. So what you have in the current account and what you have in the capital account will balance out. Okay, so a bit complex perhaps for a lot of you. So let me summarize very quickly. Openness in financial asset, financial market simply means that people can hold assets all over the world. Okay. So we start off with the goods market where we have exports, which is money coming into the country, minus imports, which is money going out of the country, which gives us the trade balance. Then we have income received, which is if a person owns an asset in another country, when that asset pays out dividends or interests or something, that's income received for the country. But if a foreigner owns an asset in in your country then we're when we pay income to that foreigner that's income paid so once again when we do income uh, received minus income paid we get 238 uh, then there is net transfer uh, which is effectively aid monies that we give on a humanitarian grounds developmental grounds etc to the rest of the world for us it's negative because they give a lot of aid for Bangladesh, it will be positive because we receive a lot of aid. And when we adjust all of it, we get a figure that's called the current account balance, just given right here, current account balance. Current account balance tells us exactly how much money uh, has flown in or out of the country during that year. Then we come to the practical account, uh, and this effectively shows us how much assets have been bought and sold by the people of US and the rest of the world. So when a foreigner buys an asset in your country, that's money coming into your country, but that's also increasing foreign holdings uh, in your country. Uh, and when you buy something in another country, a financial asset in another country, or any other asset in another country, that's money going out but that's also increasing the holdings of your country in other countries. And when you adjust for that, you will get 239. There will always be some statistical discrepancies. So when you adjust for the error, you will end up with the same figure. And that's very briefly is what happens when you introduce openness to the financial market.